Hello there friends and welcome! This is a guide of everything you need to know about how to build a very tanky Vampiric character that also deals great damage and most importantly has amazing survivability because every single one of your hits will restore your hit points no matter their source from normal attacks, multi-hit weapon arts and so on. And all of this while remaining solo, without any summons or spirit ashes. Perfect for not only normal exploration, but also bosses, some of which even get staggered into submission from your very powerful weapon arts. And like all of my guides, I'll also show you ways to achieve almost all of this very early during the game. So without further ado, let us get started, first with class selection. Alright, so as far as starting class, I recommend you go with Vagabond for most melee builds as usual. Your starting stats are very solid overall, nothing here is wasted. Especially the mental stats which will come in handy later on for some nice buffs. And when it comes to your keepsake, go with the Golden Seed as usual for the very handy extra flask charge early game. Alright, so the first step towards getting our very powerful regenerating tank character online is getting our main life steel weapon, the Great Star's Great Hammer. This is a very unique weapon in that every single one of your strikes with it will restore your hit points by 1%. That's right, no matter if the enemy blocks your strikes, if it comes from a normal attack or multi-hit weapon arts, you are still going to regain hit points for every single one of your strikes. By default, the Great Stars can also achieve decent attack rating when you are properly buffed and have up to A strength scaling when upgraded with the heavy affinity. Last but not least, it even has passive bleed build up as well. One of the best parts is how early you can get this powerful weapon. So here's how it goes. Right, so the Great Stars is actually in the Altus Plateau region, close to the Royal Capital. This does require you to cross the Grand Lift of Dectus, which is a lot easier than you might think. For example, my character was able to get it just at level 10. So in case you don't know how to do it, you need to find both halves of the Dactus Medallion. You don't have to defeat any enemy or story boss for them. The first half is right here at Fort Height, southeast of the Mistwood outskirts Grace. You also can just run past all of the enemies first up the stairs here. Be careful with the flask throwers. Then just rush for the tower. And climb up the ladder. And at the top you'll find your first half of the Dactus Medallion inside the chest. As for the second half, it is at Fort Faroff in the Kaelid region. A very easy way to reach this area is to use the Sanding Gate just a little bit to the north of the Third Church of Merica, and it will send you right to the Bestial Sanctum. Then you just keep going south and southwest with your horse and you'll easily reach the fort. Once you are at Fort Faroff, well, <laughs> you just want to run past all of the enemies, which is very easy. So just keep going straight ahead first, then climb up the ladder, and here we are. Alright, so after crossing into the Altus Plateau from the Grand Lift of Dectus, so from the Road of Iniquity side path grace, you just want to go towards the blue marker, so southwest, along the road. You can already see the guarded wagon we have to open for our chest. To actually loot the chest, we have to at the very least hit one of the giants one time. This will get them to stop. And the carriage will also stop moving. Now I recommend you draw the enemy's aggro with your horse, just so they don't interrupt you when you are attempting to open the chest. So just drop them away. And then use your horse's speed to easily loot the chest. And there we are, the Great Star's weapon. If you die, it's not really much of an issue. Because if you already open the chest but fail to loot the item, the chest will remain open so it's even easier to loot it afterwards. Alright, so now that we have the ultimate lifesteal weapon, let us talk about the best Ashes of War to combo with it. First with the best early Ash of War, and it is Wild Strikes. When you use this, by pressing LT or L2, your character will start swinging your weapon multiple times in front of you, so long as you keep the button pressed. Each use will cost a bit of FP and stamina, and you'll only stop when you run out of one of them, usually stamina. This Ash of War is very unique in that it actually gives you hyper armor for most of your strikes, 
For those that don't know, Hyper Armor means your character will not be staggered by most enemy attacks, even if you have low poise, while casting or using this skill, which makes it amazing for enemy packs and also boss battles. Second, you swing decently fast even with huge and slower weapons. And third, it's also amazing for weapons that have innate debuff effects like bleed, with our great stars. And of course, every single one of our wild strike swings will proc the great stars healing effect for great survivability and damage at the same time. Now, finding wild strikes is also very simple, it can be done super early. From the Stormhill Shack Brace, you just want to keep following the road until you reach the castle entrance. So, well, right here you already find the scarab you have to defeat. There it is. And there we go, Ash of War Wild Strikes. Just be careful with the Ballista enemy, so you don't get hit. Now the next step in our build is finding the ultimate weapon buffing spell, Blood Flame Blade, an incantation that you empower your weapon with a very nasty bleed debuff for every strike, including from our weapon arts that do multi strikes at once. It also adds some extra fire damage that scales based on your faith only at the moment. So while this secondary effect won't be that big, it is still a great effect for enemies that recoil when damaged with fire, such as the big spider hands and also some of the beasts. Most importantly, the extra bleed debuff will also stack with whatever innate bleed your weapon already has, such as our great stars. Now to find Blood Flame Blade, simply head to either the Fallen Runes of the Lake Grace or the Temple Quarter Grace in Lyurnia of the Lakes, then go northwest of the Rose Church, right where I have my blue marker set, and you can already see there's a Scarab right there that we have to defeat. And there we go, Blood Flame Blade. Now, as an incantation, Blood Flame Blade will require a Sacred Seal to cast, and you can easily buy the Finger Seal right here at Round Table Holes from the Twin Maiden Husks Merchant. Alright, now let us talk about the truly ultimate Ash of War for our tanky lifesteal combo, Prelate's Charge. This skill works like this. If you just press the button once, your character will slam your weapon in the ground, damaging the enemy, then slide it alongside the ground, taking the enemy with you for just a little bit, and send the enemy flying upwards after that. Most of the damage will come from these two strikes, the first main hit, the ground slam, and also the last hit, the upward slam. The true beauty about this Ash of War, however, comes from the fact that you can keep on charging it to extend the middle part of the attack when you are sliding and bulldozing the enemy all around the battleground with your hammer. While the damage of this part might not be great, it does quite a lot of damage ticks to the enemy, and every single one of these small ticks will trigger your Great Star's healing effect for a massive vampiric lifesteal effect to your character. This skill also has hyper armor, just like Wild Strikes, and it will leave some fire puddles on the ground that also heal you whenever the enemies are damaged by them. And most importantly, so long as the enemy is of humanoid size, like Melania, you will keep them staggered through the entire move, resulting in them being knocked down at the end. So overall, a perfect skill for our character and truly a game changer. The reason I'm only talking about it now is that it takes a while to get, unlike Wild Strikes, which is meant to support your character until you can actually get Prelate's Charge, and here's how it goes. Now to find Prelate's Charge, you have to go to the mountaintops of the Giants region, so somewhat later in the game, although you can rush here by defeating two story bosses, then going through the capital, and at the end you'll be able to enter the mountaintops of the giants. Anyways, because of how powerful this skill can be, I would certainly recommend you rush it. From the White Ridge Road Grace, you want to head a little bit southwest, until you reach this part I have marked with the blue icon here. You have to go to a Fire Monk camp, and right here, hanging next to one of those trees, you'll find a scarab you have to defeat for Prelate's Charge. Just lock onto it and you'll easily be able to find it. Then go for any ranged attack to cause the scarab to fall, and after that you can whack on it until you get your skill. Alright, so now let us talk about how to make our already very tanky, very sustainable character even tankier, to the aid of passive regeneration effects. As you can see right here, our hit points we will generate at a very fast rate. 
and all of this can be achieved pretty early game. Let us first start with our regeneration shield, the icon shield. It will give you 3 hit points regenerated per second. The good thing about this shield is that even if you have it on your back, you'll still retain the regeneration effect, so you can two-hand your Great Star's weapon just fine. Now you can find the Icon Shield right in this section of the Woodfolk Ruins where I have my blue marker set. So just go straight ahead past the enemies. And here we are, the Icon Shield, close to the slug. You don't really have to fight any of the enemies here. For another very powerful regeneration effect, we have the Bestial Vitality spell. It only costs 12 faith, which we just happen to have for the Blood Flame Blade spell anyways. This will regenerate your hit points by 5 per second for 2 entire minutes, and getting it is pretty simple too. You need to give 3 death roots to Gurank, Beast Clergyman, right here at the Bestial Sanctum. The first death root you can find by defeating the Tibia Mariner Skeleton boss at Summon Water Village, a very easy boss. The second by defeating the Skeleton Black Knife Assassin at the Death Touch Catacombs. And the third of the early death routes by defeating another Tibia Mariner boss at this part here, south of the Artist Shack Grace in Lyernia of the Lakes. Then simply give your three death routes to Gurank and you'll get not only the Claw Mark Seal which lets your incantation scale with strength, but also the Bestial Vitality spell. Later on you can also get Blessings Boon for 7 hit points restored per second, but at a much higher faith requirement, 24, so double that of Bestial Vitality. Lastly we also have the Blessed Dew Talisman, for 2 hit points restored per second. All of the ones I mentioned will stack with each other, so BC of Vitality or Blessing Spoon, and then the Icon Shield and Blessed Dew Talisman, for more than 10 points per second. A very easy way of finding the Blessed Dew Talisman is to go to the Tower of Return at the Weeping Peninsula. At the top of it, you can open a chest that will teleport you right to the Divine Bridge at the Royal Capital. So you just go up the stairs, past the big giant enemy that will be asleep and open the chest for your blessed dew talisman. Alright, so at last, let us talk about attribute point and stat allocation for our character. I'm level 145 here, but you don't need to go as high, and I'll give you some stat ranges for nice flexibility. Your most important stat is strength, because this is where most of your damage comes from. We are going for the heavy affinity upgrade after all. You'll want something around 66, so you can then two-hand your weapon for 99. I do realize you can also get higher scaling past 99, but we only end up at A scaling instead of S, so I find it somewhat wasteful when it comes to points. Now you don't even necessarily need as high as 66 in strength. If you want to conserve on points, you can certainly end up at something like 60 or at the minimum 55. A lot of your damage will come from the bleed procs after all. Your second most important stat as a tank character is of course Vigor. I definitely recommend you end on 50 to 60. You can also go as low as 40 but I would really prefer 50 to 60. Now you also need some faith to cast very powerful incantation buffs as I've already mentioned. 12 is the bare minimum, but if you want to cast Blessings Boom and also Golden Vow, the last remaining points if you have them to spare can certainly go into Endurance for some more stamina and equipment load as well. Alright, now let us talk about the best armor and talismans for our vampiric tank character. So when it comes to armor, we are a tank so we certainly want the heaviest, bulkiest armor with the highest damage negation. I'm using Radan set here for style, but the best one overall is the Bull Goat. You can also go with Veterans, Scaled, Malformed Dragon, even the Starter Banished Knight armor. These are certainly very heavy, which is why I said to go with a few points into Endurance. But remember, you can always use your Winged Crystal Tear Flask effect for a massive amount of equipment load so you can fast roll, even with the heaviest of armors. Also, please check out my guide link to the site here and down below in the video description on how to become a true tank of our character, where I cover all sorts of different ways besides just heavy armor, such as talismans, other buffs and so on. Lastly, as far as the helmet slot, because this build does have bleed, you can always go with the white mask to increase your attack power whenever you affect an enemy with bleed or even yourself through the aid of the seppuku skill so you can keep a secondary weapon just to trigger seppuku before boss battles. 
and challenging encounters. When it comes to talismans, you have a lot of different choices. We have the Ritual Sword Talisman to increase your attack power at maximum, the Godskin Swaddling Cloth, amazing with multi-hit weapon arts like Prelate's Charge, to further enhance your hit points recovery and lifesteal, the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia and the Winged Sword Insignia, to increase the power of your attacks with successive hits, once again great for skills like Wild Strikes early on, the Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman, for the same effect as the White Mask, because of how easy it is to recover your health, you can also go with the Ritual Shield Talisman, to increase your damage negation at full health even further, and of course the Shard of Alexander, for way bigger weapon art damage, great for both Prelate's Charge and also Wild Strikes. And if you want to become even tankier against physical blows, the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman or the Shield Talisman plus 2. Now you still have other ways of empowering your damage even further, such as through the Fire Scorpion Charm, because we do have fire damage, especially with Prelate's Charge. So as usual, please check out my How to Min Max Damage Guide, linked to the side here, if you want to know more. Lastly, when it comes to your Wondrous Physic Flask effects, the Winged Crystal Tear, as I mentioned before, if you want fast rolling even with heavy armor. We also have the Thorny Cracked Tear, to increase the power of your successive attacks, and this does stack with the Winged Sword Insignia, and also lasts for 3 minutes, so plenty of time. The Flame Shrouding Cracked Tear, for higher fire damage, and you can even use the Crimson Burst Crystal Tear, for a regenerative effect if you don't want to bother with the faith incantations like Blessing Spoon or Beast of Vitality, this won't stack with them. The Strength Knot Crystal Tear can also help a lot as it will increase your strength by 10 entire points for 3 minutes, very good for the early game and even the late game if you want to conserve some points in strength. Alright everyone, so this was it for my Vampiric Tank Guide. I hope I've managed to properly show you how effective this build can be. If you found this guide useful, then please remember to support the channel if you can by liking, subscribing and even becoming a member. And don't forget to comment down below anything you think I might have missed. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends!